there going to be anything done in a meaningful way to try to bring some certainty to this uh, to the energy sector, especially as it relates to renewable electricity in Alberta. So we've, uh, you know, we had that moratorium over a year ago. It's really, uh, it, it's really driven away interest in investing in Alberta by the renewable energy sector. And so we're looking for uh, the government to do the kind of work that is needed to restore that kind of confidence in, in investors in this province again, so we can bring that to uh, that investment back. Well, give me like an anecdotal example or a story you've heard or some numbers you can point to that prove that that moratorium has been harmful for Alberta, for Canada's energy capital. In Alberta, we were leading the whole country in renewable energy, wind and solar development. Companies could do deals, sell the the attributes of the of the renewable energy to, to uh, corporations across Canada that were looking to be able to buy renewable energy uh, and be able to tell their customers that they were paying a premium to to get their electricity that, uh, from renewable sources. And that has uh, uh, stopped the projects that were in the queue are continuing to be built, but there aren't uh, new ones being added to the queue. Meanwhile, in other parts of the country, we're seeing uh, all the major population centers, you know, BC, Quebec, and Ontario, all doing uh, big calls for renewable energy. Uh, and that's where the investment is going now. But when it comes to uh, attracting investment back to this province, it can be done. Um, and uh, I mean, we, we still have a, a, a you know strong resource here. Um, there's also a growing demand for for clean electricity in Alberta. The it's going to take time though. It's already going to take um, you know probably you know 18 months before we start to see you know even if if we were to resolve the uncertainty that exists right now before we start to see like the same kind of level of interest in developing projects in Alberta uh, as we were seeing before the moratorium. But we have time to uh, take advantage of things like um, the fact that we. We really can produce a lot of clean electricity. Some of these voices from outside of Alberta, like the International Energy Agency, into the conversation in Alberta, because we're, there just isn't enough conversation happening about how to prepare for that future. And we have time. We, we don't have a lot of time, uh, but we have time to take advantage of things like the fact that we can produce a lot of clean electricity quite affordably. Um, again, we were leading the province in this area, and that's something that we could really lean into. And if we were to combine that with our ability to put a lot of carbon uh, underground and safely store it, then you've got something that is kind of unique in the world. There's not a lot of places where you have that sort of proven carbon capture and storage capacity and technology and sector combined with the ability to produce a lot of clean, affordable, renewable energy. And, and that's something that we haven't really sort of grabbed onto as, as an opportunity in Alberta. Most of our energy products are being sold as, as fuel, but hopefully we can create markets for some of the sources to go into products, right? That's, that's really the future, I think, for the province of Alberta. Can we produce a very clean source of natural gas that's a feedstock uh, for chemical production? Can we use bitumen to make products, materials, and things like that, rather than relying on people to continuing to demand our energy? Uh, energy for transportation fuel. The, the worst thing about this transition is not knowing that it was coming, because if we know that it's coming, we can prepare for it. We can start to uh, uh, work with different levels of government on alternative plans for the community and for, and for the workforce. And there are tons of jobs uh, in, a, in a net zero economy. One of the, the, the things that the International Energy Agency is pointing out is that there's actually more jobs in the renewable energy sector and you know, building new transmission lines, scaling up the, the the electricity sector, renovating buildings than there is uh, in the in the conventional sectors. So there are opportunities, but if those opportunities, if, if communities and individuals uh, who are working in the conventional sector right now aren't aware of that change coming, they're not able to position themselves to take advantage of those new opportunities. Mm. Given Alberta's abundant natural resources, where do you think the province should prioritize renewable energy investments? Like people talk about wind and solar, those are the obvious ones geothermal i think is is pretty interesting and then there's nuclear which there's not much of a conversation around but a lot of people say that it packs the biggest punch and it's something that we should obviously be looking at what's your take so nuclear is definitely a possibility the iea produced a, a chart that shows that you know the different costs for different sources of power solar pv so the solar panels on the ground are by far the the cheapest the same with the uh, wind you know onshore so that is the cheapest source of electricity it's, it's a lot 
cheaper than natural gas. Nuclear is still expensive and it probably is going to remain expensive. And so there's a role for it to play potentially, you know, especially in places where that it's already uh, well established like Ontario, but it's not, it's not the cheapest option. And so it's, it's not, uh, it's not the thing that we ought to be focusing on in order to produce like the, the majority of our energy in a place like Alberta. You know, how can we design a grid in Alberta that maximizes the ability to, uh, to produce energy from the cheapest sources, which is wind and solar. So the way to do that would be to um, pursue interties with other jurisdictions so that when we produce, a, when we have the ability to produce a lot of extra wind and solar because the sun is shining and the wind is blowing, we can sell that power, buy it back when, when we need it. Mm -hmm.